Ladies and gentlemen, you are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora. When the ship docks, I'm getting off with you. You know of the rebellion against the Empire? You must learn the ways of the Force if you're to come with me to Alderaan. This is nothing we were ever trained for. And here we go. Welcome to the Movie Man's Corner. I'm John the Movie Man Gruscio, and if you have a question about a movie, then think no further because I'm the man to see. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the very and vast exciting topic of superheroes in the cinema. My guest for today is Garrett Crump, owner of G's Comics, a local comic book store here in Murray. Before we get started, Garrett, could you tell us a little bit about G's Comics and how it was started up? Oh, uh, yes. I started G's Comics approximately six years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a comic shop that we have comics, of course, games, toys, mm -hmm. oh, t-shirts. action figures. <laughs> yes, yes. For, for those discerning collectors, action <laughs> figures. We tried to have the store, your atypical comic store, where mm -hmm. everyone felt welcome to come, browse, and not your general store that you see on TV where you just have a group of people that sit around all day and basically kill time. So mm -hmm. I said, everybody's welcome. We have things for, for adults and children. Okay. All right, uh, now for the first thing up on today's discussion. Do you think that we're going through superhero movies way too fast? Not at this time. The time is actually right. The old adage, do it while you can do it and mm -hmm. get it while it's hot, that's what's going on now. But a lot of the movies, as you're well aware of, are mm -hmm. either remakes or prequels or just not worth actually seeing. Mm -hmm. And you have a rich and vast array of things out of the comic genre that the technology now is ready to do in the movie area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, uh, I can agree with you there as far as technology. We're, right. I mean, we're up there as far as it comes to technology yeah. and movies, but I mean like, as far as like storylines, because we've got, we've got Iron Man. We've already, Iron Man 1, I believe, came out in 2008. Yes. Iron Man 2 followed in 2010. Yes. And now next summer we're going to have Iron Man 3. Right. I mean, pretty much the entire, well, as far as Iron Man's storyline, as I guess Marvel's ready to go, yes. I mean, pretty much that's already over, almost. Yes. And I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is not getting any younger. No. I mean, but I mean, in that aspect, do you think that they may have gone through them a little bit fast, or do you have to just go that fast in order to tell certain parts of the story? You have to go that fast. Uh, in my opinion, with today's attention span, you know, it's hot today, and you will forget about it tomorrow if you don't keep on pushing out. Of course, it has, stories have to be quality mm -hmm. or to be soon forgotten. But as far as Iron Man goes, exactly like you said, Robert Downey Jr., which without him, there would be no Iron Man movie. So I, you, I agree with you. You have to basically get him while he's mm -hmm. still young. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's definitely a brave man. I will give him that. A man who's, I think he's in early 40s. Yes, he's my age, yes. Yeah, is. and he's, <laughs> he's, he's still doing it. I yeah. mean, you, you definitely have to give him credit for that. Um, I think I can say this. Uh, I know I can say this personally because I've seen the film and I love it. I think I can say this en with enough assurance that most of this country has seen The Avengers and probably worldwide a lot of people have seen yes. it. Should we be surprised that this movie is the number three highest grossing film of all time? In my opinion, no. On one reason, the director, Josh Whedon, he has mm -hmm. a mass following. So a lot of people nowadays will go just to see what their guy is going to do with this franchise. Mm -hmm. And as far as the movie itself, the way it was set up with the individual movies and also the actors portraying those movies was a lot for females to view. So that's mm -hmm. a big part of your viewing area where, where females, wives, girlfriends, daughters. So the Avengers movie had a little bit for everybody. I mean, it was a movie you go see with your f guys, see with your girlfriend, or go see with your entire family. It was just overall a really good movie. Mm -hmm. so, you th so you definitely think Marvel's been doing very well in the phase one and now starting phase two process? Yes, Marvel dominates live action movies. <laughs> Well, uh, hitting on Joss Whedon, of course, as you just mentioned, he who did, a again, such a lovely job as the director and writer of The Avengers. Yes. 
Other than the fact that he has just accepted an offer to direct Avengers 2, which I believe comes out in May of 2015, and is developing a TV show for ABC called S.H.I.E.L.D., of course. Yeah. What else do you think we can expect with him and Marvel? Do you think they're kind of just hunched over in the closet, just kind of laughing at all the stuff we don't know that they're doing? Yes, at this point, Marvel should be at Whedon's beck and call. Right? He's the go-to guy as far as movies go. So it's almost yeah. like Whedon has become Marvel's Nolan of DC. Yes, yes. He is God of Marvel. <laughs> yes. And he will continue, like I said, as long as he continues to put out good product, people will continue to see it just because mm -hmm. it's Josh Whedon. Like, you know, you have Buffy, Firefly, Serenity, you know, you mm -hmm. have a wealth of things that he has done that has been pointed on. Mm -hmm. Avengers, no different. Sadly, uh, moving on from Marvel, of course, we have to touch on DC because yeah. Marvel and DC, I mean, there's, I mean, comics, I mean, come on. <laughs> right. uh, sadly, as I, as I say this, Batman is no more. For now. Yes, for now. Hope. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises, of course, was released this past summer to a high grossing and yet a very dramatic turn right. of events. I personally thought the film was outstanding. Nolan, I know a lot of people did not think he was going to top the second one, but I think with character development of Bane and Catwoman, I think the third one, even though there was such a high mark to go over, right. I, think it, I think it did go over Dark Knight. But now that Batman is over, what, what do you think we can expect from DC now? I mean, they've definitely got to be having some plans oh, yeah, <laughs> drawn so up. Of course, you know, the Superman movie's coming out. Of course. They've got Arrow, I think it's a uh, WB or whatever. Uh, CW, CW. Uh, I think it comes out in October. That talks of Wonder Woman movie, which I don't see coming to, to reality. That, that's mm -hmm. just me. And, of course, we've got Flash yes. and all possibilities. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, DC, this is going to be their, Superman, I think, will be their make-or-break film. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, Marvel dominates mm -hmm. live action movies, where DC, more of their money has been gained from straight to DVD animation films. Mm -hmm. But there's been a lot of buzz about the Superman movie, and basically just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, me and you in general have talked before, and uh, I think one of the films that kind of was supposed to be, I guess how you say, definitely a film that was going to stand, like uh, I guess alongside like Iron Man and Thor, right. was Green Lantern. Right. And as sad, as sad enough to say this, it fell kind of short. I personally enjoyed the film. Mm -hmm. There were aspects I thought that they probably should have touched up on a little bit better, but I think Martin Campbell, who directed mm -hmm. Green Lantern, I think he did what he could, and I think Ryan Reynolds was pretty much the best character, well, the best actor mm -hmm. that they could have found to play mm -hmm. Hal Jordan. But I know that you weren't crazy about Green Lantern. You know, I felt the movie was rushed because whether it be Marvel or Sony Pictures had multiple movies out of the mm -hmm. comic book genre at that time. Green Lantern had loads of potential. Mm -hmm. If perhaps if they had picked a different Green Lantern for Ryan Reynolds to play, such as Kyle Rayner, mm -hmm. fit the more comedic aspects of that character. Like I said, it, it had so much potential. That's what upset me because it could have been a great movie because mm -hmm. at core it's a sci-fi movie and sci-fi movies are usually the best kind of movies mm -hmm. to me. Moving kind of kind of back to where we were with Batman and DC, do you think that we'll see more of Christopher Nolan and DC's kind of collaboration of sorts? Because I know that Christopher Nolan is producing and he is a uh, co-screenwriter for Man of Steel, which we yeah. mentioned earlier. I mean, uh, ooh, and I know some people have called Warner Brothers, DC, and Christopher Nolan as the the perfect trifecta, right. sort of sort right. of speak. Um, well, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on this? Like I said, as far as that personally, I haven't, other than the Superman, of course, mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything else that they're doing, but far be it that they wouldn't use him due to his overwhelming success with the Batman trilogy. Mm -hmm. So I, they'd have something, I'm sure. For him, what, I don't know, I, it'll be good. But as you were saying earlier, it's up to his beck and call. Yes, I mean, like, whatever he uh, ex wants to do really would probably be what they would give him to do. It's like uh, Wonder Woman. Let's see. <laughs> Add another zero in the end. Maybe we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> uh, as far as superhero films go, we, uh, as we have mentioned a couple of times, uh, definitely Man of Steel comes out next June. Yeah. We have Iron Man 3 uh, next summer. Uh, Kick-Ass 2 comes out yeah. next June. 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, moving past summer, Thor 2 will be out in November. What are some upcoming films that you personally are looking forward to? And they don't necessarily have to be like in the next year or so, right. but just films in general that either you would like to see or they're coming out? Um, I'm waiting for the Justice League movie just to see if it's going to be a complete flop. You know, <laughs> you know, just you know, there's haters in all of us, but I'm going to see how how that pans mm -hmm. out. And that's really I'm more of a guess, wait and see. You know, I don't like to hear anything until it comes to the theater. I don't like spoilers. I don't like to read about mm -hmm. it two years. You know, I just like oh, this movie's coming out, then I get excited. But I would actually like to see a Hawkeye movie. Kind I'm probably bad. only more or less the, the Black Ops shield Hawkeye mm -hmm. type. Well, I know Jeremy Renner did a fantastic job, and I know I read an interview. He beat he would literally beat himself up on the set because mm -hmm. he did not think he did a good job during the movie, but I think he did. I think that's probably the aspect that he was kind of evil, I guess yeah. you could say. But, I mean, he couldn't help that. I mean, he was right. possessed by Loki. Right. I mean, who in their right mind could help <laughs> that? And guy takes a spear and... Oh, yes, you know, that magical possession. Oh, yeah. I'd have to admit that seeing Iron Man, it's like... <laughs> really, really good, really okay. good. Um, Garrick, now with the superhero movies that are coming out, who are some of the people you'd like to see in upcoming roles as superheroes, whether it be Ant-Man, Black Panther, Doctor Strange? Black Panther, I'll take Idris Elba, Black mm -hmm. Panther. He has the build and the accent mm -hmm. as well. Ant-Man... That's a movie I'd rather see as a cartoon, but nobody calls these comics to ask what, what I want. So, you know, so I guess any actor would really Well, I'm be. asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know personally, I'd like to see Benedict Cumberbatch of Sherlock. He's definitely got the build, but sadly, I've, I've recently come on to some news that I mm. think he is going to be the new villain in the 24th James Bond film. Oh. So that my, my dreams have probably pretty much been crushed. <laughs> of course... You never know. I right. mean, that could just be rumor, speculation. Um, now, I know that we've talked before about uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah. Now, you, I think you said that you, you would like to see Patrick, Patrick Dempsey, Dempsey, but I got another name I'd like right. to throw it at you. Viggo Mortensen. He does he does fit the build, and I mean... All I see is violence when I think of... <laughs> I don't know, Eastern Promises, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, is he actually going to, like, kill something, you know? So I, <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, he did such a fantastic job in Lord of the Rings, and I mean... Oh, yes, he did. And uh, when you look at, like, a current picture of him, like when he did A, a Dangerous Method, the mm -hmm. uh, movie on uh, Jung and Freud, yes. uh, he kind of fits, like, as far as, like, facial hair and stylus, uh, styling, right. he kind of fits the character a little right. bit. And I know Marvel, they'd probably jump at the chance to work with him. Oh, name recognition. But do you think, uh, if you had your choice, do you think it'd be Dempsey, or do you think you'd like Mortensen? I'd, if I were with Marvel, I'd get Dempsey just because of... It he like Dr. Sexy? That, you know, I more. Don't know. <laughs> what, what's what I hear? I, I'm not saying that from my person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the only <laughs> doctor I watch is Dr. Who. So, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't really know. But I think I think so. McDreamy, I think, is what yeah, he's called. Yeah, or something like that. And, and Marvel has is, is marketed well with the actors, like I said previously, with the actors that get to play their, their leads. Mm -hmm. Something, you know, like I said, guys go to movies just to see violence and women. You needed something for women to go see, violence and men. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they've marketed very well. So, I think they would go with someone with that, not necessarily that rugged appeal, but that everyday sexy, oh, I've seen you on TV every mm -hmm. week appeal. That's what I would do, you know. It's all about making money. Mm -hmm. I know uh, you were saying Justice League, and I, this all, I'm trying to think of a good one, a good one to ask, because I know... With you being the comic book guru, I try to I try to appease. I don't want I don't want to overstep the bounds. Um, if they do make a Justice League movie, I think we're both in agreement that Christopher Nolan would have to be involved in some way or or how. Would you want to see Christian Bale come back, or would you want to see a different person? Actually, I want to see a different person, and I'm thinking if I get the right information that Christopher Nolan's Batman was an alternate universe Batman. You think so? I think so. And this new Batman that either they're going to gear up for the movies or are actually going to appear in the movies to be the DC Comics universe mm -hmm. Batman. So I think Nolan's Batman is going to be touted as alternate reality. Okay. Do you think that uh, that in the new Justice, well, Justice League film, mm -hmm. do you think that uh, the character of Batman would have to be older? Or do you think that pretty much it would... I think DC may go with the younger, younger okay. cast. Honestly... 
I want a new Blade movie with Wesley Snipes. <laughs> you know, because in my, and not only my opinion, but a lot of a per person's mm -hmm. opinions, is that Blade One set the scope mm -hmm. for the rest of the superhero movies that are, have been coming out. Because it was amazing. It was an amazing movie with a, what I call a basically a third tier character, mm -hmm. and it showed that you can actually get a good rated R movie. Mm -hmm. Speaking of radar movies, this weekend I uh, I went to go see uh, Dread yes. with a friend and it's it's sad because Carl Urban did a really good job on Dread. Now of course I will admit I think that the original was Sylvester Stallone who Stallone I will admit when it comes to the comic books I think he captured more of the, yes. the structure, the bodily right. structure of Dread but it had more of a story but this I mean when it comes to a rated R, a highly rated R movie mm -hmm. Dread hit on all cylinders and it was as graphic as the comic books wanted and also I think it was a very bold move on Carl Urban to definitely not take the helmet off right. and there were times where I was like is he gonna take it off I mean, yeah. we, we could see but I mean Kind of like how the creator in an interview that I saw recently said, "That's that's the imagination of the character. That's the imagination. That's the good thing of the character right. is because you never know." Yeah. I mean, it's like that whole good and evil kind yeah. of thing. But I mean, uh, I definitely, I definitely agree with you there. Blade did start the tone for the radar movies, and it's good to see that, like with movies like Dread, mm -hmm. that it still keeps that right. that tone. Deep down inside of all of us. There has been a movie or two, or maybe even 20, that we have <laughs> laughed, cried, and maybe gotten even a little angry at. But we still cherish this film, even though when asked, we say we hate it. Here on the Movie Man's Corner, these types of films are known as... Movies you hate to love. You know you do. On today's segment of Movies You Hate to Love, we're going to talk about 1999's Mystery Men. In a place called Champion City, the forces of good and evil... Captain Mason, what a surprise. ...are about to collide. Well, we've always been each other's greatest nemesis. It's a sigh. Nemesis. Nemesis. Now, with the city's one true hero missing... Captain Amazing is in danger. Kaboom! Who will step forward... You again, wannabes. ...to answer the call of justice? Don't mess with the volcano, my man. Because I will go Pompeii on your butt. <laughs> oh, oh, golly. They've been waiting for this moment. The city's in peril, Lucille. All of their lives. Butch needs his vest back. Well, it's my vest, too. I bought it for him. But now that their time has come... I'm a superhero, too. What's his power? Excuse me. They're going to need all the help they can get. we got to find a lot of superheroes really quickly. State your name and power. PMS Avenger. I only work four days a month. Is there a problem with that? No. No. I... And the waffler. Waffle man! Am I too late to try out? Sorry. <laughs> You're in. Wow, my first mission, and we're gonna rescue Captain Amazing. Here we go. Universal Pictures presents. We need to talk about your plans. I'm going to kill you. Right, that's the part that really doesn't work for me. A new league of heroes that step to a different beat. Well, I am a ticking time bomb of fury. I don't find you threatening at all. <laughs> Let's do some carnage. We're not your classic heroes. We're the other guys. Mystery Men. I'm invisible! Can you see me? Yes. yes. Wow. Maybe you should put some shorts on or something if you want to keep fighting evil today. The film starred Ben Stiller, William H. Macy, Hank Azaria, Janine Garofalo, Kel Mitchell, Wes Study, Paul Rubens, and Greg Kinnear as Captain Amazing. Have you seen this film, Garrick? Yes, I think I saw it originally in 1999 <laughs> and not since. So my memories on this may be, it may be bad. Well, from, the, from what you do, Mary, of course you said you have yeah. seen it. Uh, what were your thoughts on it? For what it was, it was a very good satirical comedy on, mm -hmm. on the comic book 
genre that mm -hmm. you know and I like that some of the, I did like some of the actors and actresses in and I like Ben Stiller Paul Rubin of course <laughs> you know so hey like I said it was funny but mm -hmm. would I repeatedly watch it no but you know if you know it was what it was it was good would you say that comedy was more of a strength in the movie as far as uh, the stunts obviously were not yeah comedy was the only strength in my mm -hmm. opinion you know, like I said it, it, was, it was funny what did you think about the uh, the direction as far and the screenplay? Did you think it was yes, very it was, well screened? I, it, like I said, it was for what it was. It was a good. I just don't like that kind of comedy as far as repeatedly watching. But it was crafted well, better than a lot of the <laughs> movies I've seen after 1999. Yeah, I know me personally. I, it was one of the first superhero movies I was ever in, introduced mm -hmm. to. I went to go see it with my parents, of course. Right. Which. That answers so many questions. <laughs> Why my parents are taking me to see Mystery Men, I have no idea. But I actually, I got into it quite a bit, and I think that's what kind of kickstarted my interest in comics. Because after that, I remember, I think it was that Christmas, I got a, uh, I think I started getting into Batman. Like I said, it can only yeah. go up from Mystery Men. Oh, so oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely a good starting place. And like I said, had had such high caliber of talents. Greg Kinnear, Ben Stiller, Janine Garofalo. Oh, yes, the, the actors and actresses, they were excellent. Mm -hmm. Garrick, I would like to thank you personally for coming on the show today. My honor to be here. And uh, hopefully we can have you back sometime soon. I appreciate it. Don't forget to check out G's Comics, located here in Murray at 605 South 12th Street, right across from Time Warner. And for more information on the store, you can find them on Facebook. Now let's take a look at some trailers for films coming soon to theaters. You know what I am? A problem solver. I take out the trash. Every move, those hard to get at stains. Oh, let's just put it this way. I'm a people person. Job's done. Relax. I'm watching your back. The only reason I have a partner, right? Right. Dad, are you okay? My partner was clipped. You gave me your word. You're getting out of that business. This is the last time. I'll never do this again. Taylor Kwan. WDCPD. I thought I smuggled a cop. Now they're interested in some disposable hired hitter. I want the guys who took out your partner. What are you gonna do? Bring out some kung fu from the homeland? I was born in Florida. <laughs> I hire people like you to eliminate the enemy. You two are insane! You're dealing with an ex mercenary. He's gonna punch your ticket, and I am gonna watch. You don't just kill a guy like that! I just did. Seems like I have something you want. Dad? I swear to you, when I get this guy, it's gonna be bad. Hey, you mind if we uh, listen to something from this century? I can't let you go on some killing spree! No! Trying to sound like a broken record. They don't even make records anymore. Great. You and me, family will unfinished business to take care of. You get a fighter, you plan on boring me to test. I know, I've heard the speech. We should have taken him in. Don't trust anybody. That's how you stay in the game. Bang, down, owned. It looks like Sylvester Stallone is back in action, and now he is a ruthless hitman. Who would have ever thought? Going up against the new Conan himself, Jason Momoa, in an axe fight out of all things. Even if this movie is bad, the action scenes will be epic. Following Stallone and Momoa, the cast is rounded out by Soon Kang of the Fa of Fast and Furious franchise, Sarah Shai, and Christian Slater. Bullet to the Head explodes into theaters on February 1st, 2013.
give the people an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you. They will stumble. They will fall. But in time, they will join you in the sun. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. For a film that is a list topper when it comes to most anticipated films of 2013, Man of Steel will feature a true origin story of Clark Kent with his rise as Superman. With newcomer Henry Cavill putting on the cape this time, he will be joined by an all-star cast featuring Kevin Costner, Lawrence Fishburne, Diane Lane, Amy Adams, and Russell Crowe. Man of Steel will fly into theaters on June 14, 2013. For films coming out this week, we have Hotel Transylvania, Looper, Pitch Perfect, and Won't Back Down. Hotel Transylvania stars the voices of Adam Sandler, Selena Gomez, Andy Samberg, Kevin James, David Spade, and CeeLo Green. The film is directed by Jenny Tarkovsky. It is rated PG for some rude humor, action, and scary images. Looper stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Bruce Willis, Emily Blunt, Paul Dano, Piper Parabo and Jeff Daniels. The film is directed by Ryan Johnson. It is rated R for strong violence, language, some sexuality featuring nudity and drug use. Pitch Perfect stars Anna Kendrick, Rebel Wilson, Brittany Snow, Anna Camp, Adam Devine, and Christopher Mintz Plossy. The film is directed by Jason Moore. It is rated PG-13 for sexual material, language, and drug references. Won't Back Down stars Maggie Gyllenhaal, Viola Davis, Holly Hunter, Oscar Isaac, Rosie Perez, and Ving Rhames. The film is directed by Daniel Barnes. It is rated PG for thematic elements and language. That's all for this episode of The Movie Man's Corner. I'm John the Movie Man Gruccio, and I will see you next week, same time, same place. Movie Man out. <laughs>